Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to do a long-ish edit of this picture here. So let's have a look at what we can see. Well, of course, in the middle here, we've got this dominant cathedral here. This is Segovia in Spain, a beautiful place. And there's a lot of sky here, which tends to make this look a bit smaller. We don't really need all that. It's a nice sky, but it's not all that necessary. Down here we've got the buildings here, kind of giving a bit of a leading line in towards the cathedral there. So is this line here. This thing down here is obviously you know, red and grabbing the eye. So perhaps we would clone that out. But, you know, I don't think we need these buildings here. Let's focus in more on the cathedral. So let's start off with a crop. You can also see there's some dust spots here which we can crop away rather than having to fix them. So let's go down here, something like that. So these clouds here don't just snick off at the top there. And we'll come up here. So we're just above the building there. So we can see some height of this. And come in maybe a bit here. And so we can see the trees and things here, maybe crop in a little bit more. And if we actually, this is a good one to, for a central line, so we'll put the, the cathedral on the centre. We'll let this stay in. So we'll actually take that bad out again. So we've got the centre line, you can see the dot there. That puts the cathedral in, which will hold the eye a bit more. And that, for this kind of photograph, I think it's appropriate. So let's just uh, apply that. That's a, a bit better as well. Also, because it's now a letterbox format, this works well because there are things to look at left and right. It makes you turn your head, and you, because eyes are are on the you know horizontal plane, they're left and right. They're not up and down. It lets you you know, track across and sort of follow into the distance, but then always come back to this central stable cathedral position. We can check to see if there's any more dust spots left. Just go to the Unsharp Mask and turn up these. Any more dust spots showing up there? No, so we can delete that. Also, let's just spin in here. This building here is a bit white. We might need to, to do something about that. But when we come in here, what we're seeing here is a lot of chromatic aberration. So let's just try that. First of all, we'll go to Filters, Colours and Chromatic Aberration. There, that's addressed a lot of it, but it's not perfect yet. So, next thing on top of that is to do a defringe. Then we click on an area that's got fringing in it. So click there. That automatically takes that area to there, and then simply bring down the threshold. And that's a point at which that will start to go a bit grey. Try the radius. Does that make a bit of a difference? There's a point at which you hold that down and then bring it up. There's a point at which it disappears. So leave it at that point there. Tolerance. Just a little bit up on that. Then apply. Then we've also got this a lot of red here. So we do it again. Filters. Colors. Defringe. It says also remove complementary hue, but I find that doesn't always work too well. So I'll try this one again. Bring down the threshold. There. Yeah, I had to bring that down quite a bit lower to make that work. How's the radius going to work? Bring up, the th bring up the threshold and bring... Can we do it on the radius? No, I'm going to have to do it with it. Make sure the threshold is low enough. Then it's still a bit red, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. You can see there are things there. So you could spend a little bit more time playing with that. But I think that's good enough. Whilst we're here, we'll, Lou, we're going to do a bit of sharpening. But first of all, let's look at whether we need to denoise it. And particularly go to the main subject here, walls and things. You can see there's noise there. So we'll go to a filters and where is it? Denoise. And always denoise before sharpening, of course. And we turn up the luminance. See, it only takes a little bit. There we go. And that's just smooth that out a bit. We don't want to go too far, otherwise it looks sort of cartoon-like. 
then we can do a bit of sharpening. So we'll do a high pass sharpen, which I often use. Check the monochrome, blend mode to linear light, or you can do it looking at the thing itself. But let's do it this way. Very seldom go above one. Look at the way. So you go up there, that's just way too much. So one pixel is enough there. It's not too bad. You guys get a little bit of pixelating here. So maybe just a, a little bit. That's okay. That'll do. That'll do. Hit that, cause that's resumed right in here. Double check the noise. See if that makes it that a little bit more. Cause if you turn up the noise a bit more, and it'll take out the crunchiness of the of the sharpening. There we go. Do we need to do white balance? If I drag this down here, what's that look like? 240, 240, 238. That's pretty much white, isn't it? Clouds aren't always white, but they, you can often use them as a reference, but they are in this case, so we don't need to do that. So control zero, back out again. Now well, that's looking good. Now let's get onto this this colour thing with this 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 is just dull. This has got to show some interest in it. So what we're gonna do is let's put in a Right click here and say, where is it? Merge visible. So I'm going to put a layer above here that basically captures everything here, holds everything. We can always do this again if necessary. So I'm going to collect that, control G group, and to make sure nothing's going to happen, but it shouldn't anyway, I just do this to it. So now that what I want to do here is to start to select the areas that are you know, this, this stonework that I want to brighten up. So you do an HSL. And I'll pick one of these, just the first one will do. Click on the picker and pick on the stonework. And that's going to be orange. Yeah, that's orange. Just that's what you're likely to get for this. Then what I do is turn the saturation down. But now this, I've got the area I want to select is grayed out. So what I do is I turn this around the other side now and then I push these all the way down so they are just getting into the orange. Now this area I want to select is the coloured area. So how do we get a selection from this? Well there's a trick we can do with this to remove the black and white with a little bit of procedural texture and so what I'm going to do is do a life filters and procedural texture and to, to detect the grey and go plus here take don't need red but I want alpha a for alpha which is transparency and grey in grey the minimum and the maximum values are the same. In other words, red, green and blue are all the same values. They're grey. And so the minimum equals the maximum. So if I say min r, comma, g, comma, b, uh, actually it's be max minus min, isn't it? So max r, g, comma, b, minus min. There we go. And what you can see is this starting to select here, but this is very, very faint. So now I need to basically, because it goes from value from 0 to 1, so I need to round that up to 1. So I do round up, open bracket, and close bracket there. And there we go. We've got ourselves a bit of a selection here. And because I'm doing this here, I can also go back to the HSL if I want to and play around with this. It's on the red one, isn't it? So that makes that visible. And do I want to, if I adjust this, is this going to take bits out? And I can play with that for a while, but I'll I'll kind of leave it round about like that, in particular around this area. I don't want to lose bits from that. So that's okay.
So now the question is I want to select this. So if I do select and selection from layer, I just get a selection line all around the outside. So I need to get this bit. So I need to create a layer I can select from. So I could do another one, but what I'm going to do is going to do a take the base layer, control D, get rid of the marching ants, don't need that. Control J, so I've got this original layer and these three here. Select all of them, hit control G. Now I've got this the whole thing in a group like this. And I need the procedural texture on. I managed to turn that off, which is why it went grey. Turn the bottom layer off there so I can see where I am. And now to select around here, I can now go to select and selection from layer. And now it's selected all those areas there, which is great. So I now I can use that to start addressing it. So I'm going to go to adjustments and I'll go to HSL again. Let's use lots of HSL. That's automatically going to pick up the mask of this. So if I alt click on this, you can see there, that's it. I need to do control D, don't need that because I've collected this here. So this is now selecting this area. And also means I can paint black on this if I wanted to remove anything from it. So just click to and from it like this. And then with the HSL, I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to do something like turn the light lightness up. But this kind of like makes it go a bit grey, but I'm going to use this as a blend. So if I go to something like the linear light here, for example, or vivid light, look at these here, maybe vivid light. You can take a pick of those. And then when we move this around here, see we can, it looks a bit better. And we can bring the bottom layer on. So we can now see now we've lightened up this whole thing. But that's still a little on the, the bright side. So let's actually turn the opacity down on this. So it's not quite as dominant. So what I'm doing, I'm brightening up these areas here around. And I look at this. Are there areas I don't particularly want brightened up? Well, maybe some of the background and things like that. So I can get a paintbrush and paint in black. Open this up a bit. Opacity 30, yeah, that'll do. Hardness 53, that's about half, that's fine. So I can now paint on here. So I don't need that background brightened up. Anything in there? Anything in here? I'm not sure I can always alt click this again. I'm going, okay, doke. Well, actually, let's paint away this down here. I don't really need any of this. In fact, let's turn the opacity up for this because I just don't need this at all down here. So I know where this is. In fact, up there, I can take that out as well. So click backwards and forwards is anything else I want to tone down a bit. Maybe I'll turn down the opacity here. This is getting a little bit dominant here. So let's turn out the yellows of those trees to so just knock them back a bit. And, and even these houses here, they're just a little bit strong, aren't they? So I'll hit a two for 20 to make that go to 20. And then to paint backwards on this a little bit. Don't them to overpower the cathedral itself. In fact, what we'll do, I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate this. I'm going to do some more, but I can select just the cathedral here. So I'm going to alt click that again so I can see where I am. Bring the opacity back up to 100% and just paint away everything. This, by the way, is not going gone completely black because of the opacity. If I turn the opacity up, you can see there. That's where we are. So just going to paint around the cathedral, take out everything except that cathedral area. In fact, I could turn the hardness down a bit now for the final bits, just to kind of fill the fill that around. If necessary, I can always do this again. 
I've gone too hard on that. So now I can do something else. So here, maybe change the blend mode on this because when you overdo it, yeah, overlay's better here. Then turn down the opacity a bit. So it's just about making this thing look credible. Maybe linear light. Now it's got a luminosity there. Saturation, bring that up a little bit, maybe. Just, uh, just play with this until the whole thing looks credible. But it's certainly that's a lot better. Let's take those two HSLs off, on. There we go. Look at the way we brought that back to life. Just with a little bit of sneaky selection and a bit of HSL. That's all it is. Anyway, let's leave it there. Hope that was interesting and thank you very much for watching.